Somebody stand on your feet if you're ready for that anointing and give God a great shout of praise. Come on, turn these audience mics up and let's let the place roar. Come on, you're the lion of the tribe of Judah, roar. I want to say thank you to everybody in the room for being hungry enough to show up. I've been wanting to preach this word for a long, long time. Remain standing if you're physically able. If you cannot, I completely understand. I want to also say thank you to Pastors Greg and Steve, Steve Ball. Your staff came. If you're part of their staff, raise your hand. I want to acknowledge you. Thank you all for coming. Amen. That's a gate of Chattanooga. That's a great church. We have a lot of, if you're a, if you're a pastor here of any level, capacity, full-time pastor or in ministry, would you lift your hand? I want to acknowledge you as well for coming. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Keep it up. 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17. Where are y'all from? You got you on you, big you. Covington, Georgia. Where? Yell it out. Where are y'all from? Rome. Rock Mart. Are you cross faith? Cross factor. Y'all are cross factor. Love y'all. Yes, y'all came last night. Yeah, I love y'all. Carl Pierce. Love you, sir. This is a great guy right here, y'all. Him and his wife are awesome people. They from anywhere USA. They're Michaela's parents. Anybody else? Shout it out. Where are you from? Pastors, where are you from? Ministries. Anybody else? Austin. Are you from Oxford? Y'all from Oxford. Yeah, we already called y'all out, man. You missed it. <laughs> Pastor Daigle, Chris, Pastors Chris and Nita Daigle. Awesome pastors, if you're in the room. I shouted out your pastors, man. Are y'all, lo you love your pastor? We're so glad you're here. The Daigles are awesome. I want to give honor to somebody. Um, and just stay standing. After this, it'll be completely whenever you want to stand. Just get, get me through the scriptures. But I want to give honor to a gentleman, him and his wife. His wife has passed away since then. But Pastor Delana and I, Pastor Delana came up. She said, you know what we need to start doing? We need to start having prayer services. And I said, ain't nobody got time for that. I didn't really say that. But she said, we, we need to do prayer services. And I said, people don't want to do prayer services. We'll do them. Let's just call it out. Do prayer services. And on Saturday night, we showed up, and two other people showed up. It was Sam and Faye Sunderland. That's Spice's grandma and grandpa. And Sam, Sam holds a very strong place in our hearts. Because what you see was birthed in prayer 10 years ago. And we stayed consistent for seven years. And we still pray. We pray on different times. But that Saturday night, whether it was just us or people started coming, we had sometimes hundreds of people show up. And the next week, two. But I'll tell you who was constant, Sam and Faye Sunderland. He is now 84 years old in the natural, but he's 21 in the spirit. He'll take you out if you're a devil. <laughs> Come up here, Sam. I got to give honor to you, man. Come on up here. Now, now, Sam, listen, I haven't started preaching yet. It's, uh, it's okay. But I love this man. Okay. We have a reunion here. It's been years. Nobody hugs alone. Amen. God can do so much. Amen. Sam holds a special place in our heart because he still continues to give words and pray and, and release things over this church. Sam, I got 
I got so much to say tonight, but I know you could you could preach all night. But I want to give this mic to you for a second because I want them to hear what you have to say. You know, folks, we're in a in a very unique place in our lives, in, in our circumstances, and everything surrounds us. It's a place that we're looking at almost with apprehension. But then you say, why? Why are we apprehensive? Why are we concerned? Why is it bothering us? We have a blood covenant caught cut in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was tortured on a cross, punished beyond belief in the devil's hell, rose up again, sent at the right hand of the Father, and he is laying aside for us treasures we cannot even assume to understand. We are alive in Christ. We are self-safe in him. We are overcomers in him. So we are here tonight join together in the spirit, in the word, and in the presence of the Most High God, taking back this nasty world, turning it back into what God wants it to be. Amen. I told you he's got some fire in him. Y'all feel that? We need you, Sam. I love you, man. We need Sam Sunderland's around. He prays over this ministry, and he drove 14 hours to be here this weekend. And um, I honor you that. He has my personal cell phone, and he calls me and texts me, shares with me the, the word of the Lord, and he's never off. He's always on. And um, I'm grateful for you, Pastor Delenn and I both. One more time, I want us to give a standing ovation and a round of applause to one of the greatest men of God you will ever meet. wants me to give it all to him. Sam. There's no doubt in my mind that everything you've done in your life points to him. Certain people in my life are behind closed doors, but they shape me. No one ever knows about them. And I just wanted, the land and I just wanted to let people see one. You have shaped us, and we're grateful for it. Yes, Faye, I honor your, your late wife. She would come in in mink coats and lots of makeup. Big old red lips and mink coats quote scripture like that, held the door when we did cardboard testimony, she would hold the door we'd go out on the streets and hold our cardboard sign up and let people know what Jesus did and she would be right there in the middle of us man, I mean just passing the water out going taking care of people we need this generation to do that I'm so honored I'm so honored to have 80 plus and 8 and under in the same room. Pastor Tommy Pinkerton, wave your hand so everybody can know who you are. This man, we would travel when I was cutting my teeth preaching. People had to listen to me. They didn't get to listen to me. They had to listen to me. And I remember one service so great. We threw, I said, who wants to be delivered from cigarettes? We threw cigarettes all over the ground, and we danced on those cigarettes for probably 45 minutes. Wore out. There was tobacco everywhere people got delivered, including my dad. 43 years chain smoking, never touched it since. God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. If you're dealing with nicotine, I just rebuke that thing off of you right now in Jesus' name. And if you didn't, shout for the person who just got delivered. Nobody shouts alone. Come on. Get your Bibles out. September is going to be a month to remember. September is going to be a month to remember. I'm asking that you give me one hour. 
one hour. It'll go by quick, but I need to have one hour. And after that, we're going we're gonna to pray. And if you want what I talk about, I'm asking that you stay in the room. But September, there's a commitment form. And at the end, I'll talk about it. But literally, on the website, on the app, if you go to 1,000 separate, you're going to find a commitment form looking like this. And it's going to say 18 things that you're going to separate from in, in September. 18 things that you will do and separate from. 2 Timothy 3.1 says this. That's not my scripture, but it says this. In the last days, perilous times will come. And Paul tells Timothy 18 things that will look like an ungodly church. So we decided to put 18 things in that looks like a godly church. So these 18 things, I'm asking, you don't have to be a part of this church. I'm not asking for you to give to this church. I'm asking for churches all across the nation. You may be watching right now as a pastor. Uh, I'm asking for all churches. One of the great things of the things on here that I'm asking for people to support their local church and to give a separate, significant, and very sacrificed offering on the weekend of Rosh Hashanah to their church, not this church, not to this movement, to your local church. I'm believing God that the local churches will have a rising up of power and attendance and authority. Not just attendance, but authority. So there's 18 things. You just go on, you literally go on the website, go on your phone, go on the app, Find out where it says 1,000 separate. You can go literally on my Facebook, Instagram, anywhere that you see the 1,000 mark, 1,000 separate right there behind me, or uh, 1,000 in September. And then from September 1st all the way to 31st, we are going to fast. We're going to pray. We're going to give. We're, a, we're, ha we're going to have some midnight prayer gatherings till 3 a.m. We're going to have some all-night prayer meetings. How many have ever been to an all-night prayer meeting? It'll go by as quicker than you think. And we're going to pray. Some of us may sleep, but most of us will be praying. Amen. And um, so we're going to be doing a lot of praying, a lot of fasting, a lot of giving. And here's the purpose of it. The purpose of, of it is to separate from the culture for a moment and ask God for the great awakening. A great awakening. Not an awakening. An alarming awakening. By the end of September, I believe that the church will very clearly discern what God wants to do. There will be no blurred vision. I'm not even asking, not asking for you to vote for a party. I think if you go on this fast, God will real, reveal to you who you need to vote for. I want you to be sensitive to the spirit of the Lord. September is a month to separate. Everybody say, I'm separating in September. Okay, now I'm going to read the scriptures. I need everybody in the room to stand up. Please honor the scripture. If you don't even want to honor me, at least honor the scripture. Exodus 30. I'm in a different place. I've been nice. I'm asking that you be t tolerant. If I seem angry, just know I'm not angry with you. I'm angry with the enemy right now. I'm angry with a church that doesn't see it. angry. I'm burdened that the church is not burdened. And I want to show you what God is going to do. Exodus 30, God gave me this scripture. God gave me this message right before I went to Pastor Rod Parsley's church. Pastor Parsley, we absolutely love your ministry and we're with you, behind you, all the work that you've done. He has freed 40,000 slaves. 40,000 slaves he has freed I forget the state, the country but he, he went specifically to a country and, flee, and freed 40,000 slaves he has seen over 60,000 people receive Jesus Christ in his ministry this year alone in one year 60,000 no wonder the enemy attacks but I preached this right before God spoke to me to take this coat and begin to take it all across the nation. And I took it before anything. I took it to that church because I knew God had told me that this coat was going to represent what's happening to the generation that we're in. Now, when I say generation that we're in, I'm talking about 
the dispensation and not an age group, not an age bracket. Look at your neighbor and say, you're in this generation. God specifically told me to take this coat and begin to preach about what God is going to do in this generation. Because the generation that, that we're in, many of them don't understand what the anointing looks like. So I'm going to share with you. So I'm going to read, teach, preach, and then shout. Exodus 30, 22. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take for yourself quality spices. Everybody say spices. 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much sweet smelling cinnamon, 250 shekels, 250 shekels of sweet smelling cane. 500 shekels of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hen of olive oil. And you shall make these a holy anointing oil, an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. It shall be holy anointing oil. Verse 32. It shall not be poured on man's flesh, nor shall you make any other like it according to its own composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy with you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on an outsider, shall be cut off from his people. God was serious about his anointing. God was serious about the smell of it, the look of it. He was very serious about who gets it. When he talks about it should not be poured on man's flesh, he's talking about people should not be using this to smell good. Because we've been watching for the last 15 years, people use the anointing to make them smell good, make them look good. I want to keep reading here, Leviticus 8. Please remain standing. Leviticus 8, just want to lay a backdrop here and then I'm going to preach. Leviticus 8, 5. Moses said to the congregation, this is what the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. Water washing represents the word of the Lord. Washed them with the word. And he put a tunic on him, girded him with a sash, clothed him. Everybody say clothed him. Clothed him with the robe and put the ephod on him and he girded him with the intricately woven bands of the ephod with it tied and the ephod on his head. Verse 12. And he poured. And he poured. Everything else in the, in the sanctuary got sprinkled. But when the anointing came upon the person, God would not sprinkle. He poured. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head, anointed him, and consecrated him. Numbers 20. If you stay, it's going to pour. Numbers 20. Verses 25. Aaron is now about to die. God tells Moses, take Aaron and Eleazar, his son. Bring them up to Mount Hor. Strip Aaron of his garment. Put them on Eleazar, his son. For Aaron shall be gathered to his people there. So Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up to Mount Hor. In the sight of all the congregation, Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, put them on Eleazar. Aaron died at the top of the mountain, and Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. Tonight I want to talk to you about the coat of anointing. I believe it's one of the most important things we need to understand about what God wants to do in this generation. And I believe the coat of anointing is coming on you in the month of September. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you would take this word and you would pour it out. I ask that you would make me a vessel that pours. And that everything that you've told me, it would come upon them. We praise you now and we worship you knowing in advance.
that you will do mighty miracles in us and through us. I thank you for your anointing that is so precious that you would choose to hold some for this generation. In Jesus' name, if you're thankful for the anointing, would you just give him one more round of praise? You may be seated. The oil has always stood to mark something. The oil marked what God had assigned to do for somebody. You could walk around, but if you weren't a person that carried the oil, you really weren't marked by God to do anything. God is looking to mark people with his oil. But when you get marked with the oil, you also get marked as a target. You're no threat to the enemy if you don't have oil. Oil is an indication, not that you can sing good or preach good, but that deliverance is in you. Healings and miracles break out. Kingdom authority swells up inside of you. The oil doesn't, is not there to make you look famous. The oil is there to keep you humble. Because if it did not show up, you would think that it was your strength that caused the miracles to happen. The oil is a marking and an indication that you have to have it for God to move through you. Not everybody that says God is moving has the oil. There's a lot of people that have the oil that you don't even know about right now. But they're about to wreak havoc on the enemy. There's some people that have literally been in a place of separation and consecration, sanctification. Nobody knows their name. Some of you are in here tonight. And you're saying, God, why has it not been my turn for you to use me? And he's saying, just hang on for a second. I've got you in my quiver. I haven't pulled you out of my quiver yet to launch you. And it could be the very adversity that you've been dealing with is literally tension that God is pulling back the bow to launch you into another destiny. Everything that's going on in your life is just a setup. For what God wants to do through you. God is not through with you. God has just begun in you. God is looking for hungry and thirsty people. People that eat different, act different, look different. That he can show himself strong. You know the Bible says that the people that know their God will do exploits. The word no means intimate. The people that will come away with God, that will separate from everybody else, that will sanctify from everybody else, that will say to the culture, you know what, I'm going to put pause for a minute. I'm not going to listen to your music. I'm not going to watch your movies. Did I touch a cow there? I'm not going to do things for a small season because I want to show God I'm very serious about your anointing. God even used the scripture and said things like, don't let flies get in my anointing. In other words, don't spoil my anointing. Don't let your folly be mixed with my anointing. This month of September, God has already lined out what to talk about on Sundays. And I wish I could say Sundays are going to be those Sundays that you feel like God's just doing a work. But God's doing a surgical work. He's cutting through some stuff. He's removing some things. Why? Because God will not allow his precious oil to be on unsanctified territory. We've got a church that looks worldly, that we can't tell if it's a church or it's a world. We, we look good on Sundays, but Mondays through Saturdays, we, we don't even know, do they serve God? There should be something so 
different about you. That when people get in your presence, they just want to say, what is that that I feel? I feel something. You, 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 you just touched me. I felt something different. I, I, I feel a conviction. There should be so much anointing on God's people that when people are around you and they are living in sin, that they should feel hell's flames all over them and get on their knees and say, God, what must I do to be saved? That's the kind of anointing that God wants to pour out on his people, but he will not pour it out on deaf ears. He's looking for a generation that will seek after him. Now, don't get me all mixed up that we, 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 we've already been sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've heard that. You got sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ to get you to heaven. But what about bringing heaven back down here to earth? We need some people that know how to live godly. We need some people that know how to live holy. Yes, that's right. I said it. Without holiness, no man shall. Holiness is not what you wear. It's not if you're sh shaved or not shaved or if your skirt is down to your ankle. Holiness is something on the inside of you that you have refused to touch the unclean thing. The problem is, is the church has told you it's okay to dabble in this and go to that. You can screw a thing and then preach a thing. But God is looking for a holy thing. God is exposing. He's eradicating. In the month of September, I would not play. I would not play in September. September is, September is a month of separation. Not just because I called it out, but God is separating some things. He's exposing some things that aren't of him, and he's exposing some things that are of him. And I want to be on the side that he says, well done, those good, and I'm going to use you. I'm about to put an anointing on you. And I want to know, does anybody want that kind of anointing, that deaf ears open right before you? Dead people get up. That's the kind of anointing that God is wanting to pour out on his people. But it's not going to pour out on players. You can't screw a thing and preach a thing. Pastor Jamie Tuttle blew my mind when he said that. We're living in a generation that they want to do a thing and then preach a thing. And Samson shook himself. And did not know the anointing was not on him. Tried to fight. But they plucked his eyes out. They'll take away your vision after they've got your anointing. And we're living in a generation that if, you eat, if we don't see in the spirit, we're not going to see what God wants to do. This next time, this next season is not about how many people come to the church. This next season is how many people can flow in the spirit. There's a frequency level of worship. God is looking for people that are looking for him. I said this, and I believe this. In 2018, God said, I'm going to come. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Racism, he said, is going to wax hot in the summertime. Political upheaval will be completely at an all-time high. But the, God spoke to me. I spoke it on a New Year's Eve service. I said, but God said, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. He said, all eyes on Israel. Because Israel, there's a seat of coexistence happening. But the news and the network will not cover it, for they'll cover insignificant things. They won't look at Israel. But God says, that's me. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. And he said, I'm not just coming first. I'm coming through the church first. And then I'm coming. In other words, I'm not looking up to see him come. I'm looking in to see him come through me. God is anointing and appointing a radical generation of people. I thank God that I'm living in this moment. Because this moment, God is passing out trumpets to everybody that wants one. If you want to blow the trumpet in Zion, blow it. Because his word is backing up those who blow the trumpet. But I've learned something about God. If you want something from God, you're going to have to honor him. And we're living in a generation that, that literally, just this week, it bothered me. The preacher sent this to me. 
didn't even see it, but he sent it to me. He says, they're on the streets right now saying, F your Jesus. F your Jesus. They're burning Bibles on the streets. They're cussing Jesus. They're saying they're proud to go to hell. That's in the world. That's not in the church. Actually, that's not in the body. Maybe in the church, but not in the body. The body is an organism. The church is an organization. It's not in the body. Because if you're in the body, you're feeling what I'm feeling. You're feeling this sickening feeling that you better separate. You're feeling this, I've got a mandate that Cheetos can't satisfy me. Potato chips, I don't mind. Give them away. Some of y'all going to clean your closet out when you get home. Because September 1st, it'll be like boiling potatoes and water. That's all I want. God, whatever makes God happy. Fast. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose things and break things and wickedness and healing come forth speedily. Is this not why? I'm not fasting because of anything else. I'm not fasting to look good. I'm fasting to have God move in us like he's never moved before. I want to see a church that rise up in power. Arise, shine, for your light has come. But no one gets anywhere by themselves. God exalts two ways. Connection and consecration. Connection and consecration. When you're connected... Who you're connected to determines where you will go. How much you're consecrated determines how high you will go. Where you go determines who you're connected with. Be careful who you connect with in September. Because they are going to determine where you go. But your consecration is determining on how high you go. So I want to go somewhere with God, so I'm going to hook up with God. And I want to be consecrated by God because I want to go higher in God. I don't want to stay in glory. I know God says I'll take you from glory to glory glory. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 6, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and so I can exalt you in due time. We've been hearing this scripture a lot over this past few uh, months in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. He says, if my people called by my name will humble themselves. See, healing, we want healing, but you got to have humbling first. We want God to move, but you got to have humbling first. We want miracles to happen, but we got to have humbling first. There's got to be a something inside of it that says, I want myself out of the way, and I want God to move. Whatever i got to do, I will humble myself. Humbling comes before healing. And he says, turn, if my people will turn from their wicked ways. He didn't say worldly people. He said, if my people will turn, if they'll move away from that junk, if they'll move away from that mess, pull that stuff out of their ears, stop letting their eyes see the stuff, and step away from that stuff. Get me out of sinful stuff. Don't even want to hang around it. Don't even want to smell like it. God told me this. He says in Acts, he said, I, I persecuted the church to scatter them. He said in the last days, I persecute the church to gather them. The reason why we're being persecuted, you haven't seen nothing yet. Persecution is about to rise up at an all-time high in America over Christians. Sit there and look pretty all you want, but six months from now you'll say, remember when? Persecution will literally cause what they don't want to happen, and that's called gathering. God says, assemble yourselves, gather yourselves. The devil is not afraid of a building. He's afraid of a gathering. When two or three agree, gather together. You know why this movement is happening? It's because people are tired and sick and tired of people telling them that they can't gather. It's not about the mask or no mask. It's not about COVID or not COVID. It's about people coming together. The devil is afraid of a gathering. He knows what happens when two or three are gathered in God's name. And God says, I'm right there in the midst of them. Nothing that's dead can stay dead. Nothing that's broke can stay broke. Nothing that's sick can stay sick. You're in a place where people are gathered together in his name. So God exalts two ways, connection and consecration. But we expand in two ways, commitment and consistency. Can you be committed in September? Watching online, can you be 
part of the thousand that signs up. You got to sign up because if you sign up, you get the, you get every day a devotion. You get the, you get the notifications. If you don't sign up, you don't get it. But can we be committed? Not only be committed, but consistent. Because what I have found with church folk, because I'm a, we are church folk. Any church folk up in here? We're notorious for signing up and not showing up. We're notorious for 500 showing up in the upper room and only 120 there when the Holy Spirit falls. It started in Acts and it's in this, it's in this generation. Our yeses are maybes, but they look like yeses on paper, but they typically end up no's 30 days in. Some of us pay more for pay-per-view watching a boxing ring. And we're, we'll put it on our phones and everything. Hey, on such and such a date, somebody's going to fight somebody. I'm going to make sure I'm there. We'll even miss church for it. Some of us will mark the date. Somebody drops a beat. And at midnight, we're going to buy it. Some of us, we will wait for the shoe. The cream, fear of gods, or whatever they are going to drop on such and such day at midnight, the world sells them out in two minutes. And when we ask people to pray for two minutes, it's hard to show up. Our priorities have to shift, and we have to be committed and consistent with those priorities. God is going to pour anointing on people that will eat the meat of his word in September. There has got to be a change in your diet. Come on, somebody. Don't leave me up here. I, pr I promise you I'm going somewhere. We, we, we've been sucking on milk too long. Some of us have been here for 22 years drinking a bottle. And God is saying, I'm putting before you a steak. I need you to understand that that's not the elementary principles that need to be taught anymore for those who have been going to church for 20-some years. You should already be in a teaching mode. You should be teaching others, but we still have to retrain you that sin is sin, wrong is wrong, right is right. Y'all act like you don't know what I'm talking about, but we, we, we have in this generation of time across America in churches that we can't agree if homosexuality is a sin or not in church. And so we're embracing what God is telling us to eradicate. It is a sin. I'm after the sin, not the person, the sin. It's a demonic spirit. It's something that needs to be cast out. It's not an LGBTQ agenda. It's a D-E-M-O-N-I-C agenda. It's a demonic agenda. And they're after you. They're after your kids. They're in kindergarten now teaching pedophilia is okay in California. Don't tell me. You need to come. You need to get it. You need to bring it. Church, you will sit there and let the devil just play in this culture? Or are you going to stand up and be the authoritative word that God has called you to be in this dispensation? It's a good place to shout right there because God is anointing somebody to raise up and call it out what it is. Blow the trumpet. Don't blow a flute. Blow a trumpet. God is raising up and anointing Jehu. Jehu is the one that said, Jezebel's coming down. Sexual immorality is coming down. God is raising up Jehus that is getting on their horses right now and getting ready to say, I'm coming after the Jezebel spirit that is controlling and manipulating the media, controlling and manipulating America to say that sin is okay. Get her out. Somebody cast her out because she needs to come down. And I'm here to tell you every sexual demonic spirit, the church has got to unplug. You've got to pull away from pornography. You've got to pull away from stuff that is stealing your vision because you're going to shake yourself after September and there will be no anointing. Demonic spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel puts her makeup on and bats her eyes. Makes you think that she's beautiful and pretty, but on the inside, she's ready to take your soul to hell. And the church is batting our eyes back at her. Stop batting your eyes and get on your horse and ride to the city that she's in and say, you are coming out of my city. <laughs> LGBTQ, LMNOP, Pedophilia, 
talked to a pastor this week in California as we were preaching. He said right down the street, they're teaching in first grade. They have passed the law that now pedophilia is an identity. And now they can be who they want. And men can love on boys if that's who they address. And we are in Atlanta, but because we haven't been touched, we ain't going to say nothing. Oh, God, help them. No, get up. Stand up. You're anointed to speak up. If the church would raise her voice, we would change the world. But you know what we've done? Is we put on this garment. Come here, Kendall. We put on the garment. We've learned to put on church. We've learned to put the garment on without the oil. We've learned to take this, and if you feel this coat, it was supposed to be a heavy coat. Come here, I'm not going to do it yet. Put this garment on. I chose you because you're 6'4", and it's a heavy garment. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the sight of our God. And we've thought that this was our definition of church. We've defined our role as put on the garment. But the garment isn't just a role. And the Old Testament, when they put the garment on, depending on how long the garment, what the garment, and the train of his robe filled the temple represented authority. So we put the authority on, but we refuse for the anointing to be on us. The anointing is a marking. The garment is just an identity. I belong to the Levitical priesthood. But without the oil, it's just a robe. It's just a garment. It's just a status. There's no healing. There's no deliverance. There's no blessing. There's no service under the Lord. It's, uh, I've got my praise on. I've got my garment on. I can wear it. I belong to worship with one of church, but I ain't got no oil. I belong to the church in Oxford. Forgot your name, brother. I'm sorry. Rock Church. One church. But I ain't got no oil. I belong to this church. I ain't got no oil. But you try to trick people because you think that the garment they're impressed with. But the garment can't break chains. The garment can't loose anything. The garment can't deliver anything. We have learned how to have church and follow those that teach us. Because we have learned to have status-seeking Christians that we think if they've got 100,000 followers or more, they must have oil. That if people are saying what they're saying, they must have oil. No, that doesn't mean they have oil. One thing marks you when you have oil. When people come in your presence, they cannot stay the same. Oil changes people. They don't need the oil. And anymore, they don't even need the coat because they've learned how to have the church without the mantle, without the oil. They've learned how to give you chills but not how to get you free. In the last few years, many churches have had church but can't get nobody free because they want to sing and they want to shout and they want to do the Pentecostal thing, but they don't have the anointing. God is looking to put an anointing on this generation and to put a coat on this generation to experience an anointing. 
We are loosing what we should be binding in the church. And we are binding what we should be loosing in the church. We've been getting it backwards. We're allowing anything and everything to come and stay. Now listen to me. Everybody's welcome in the church. But you can't stay where you come from when you come to church. We are a church that allows anybody and everybody from all backgrounds, all lives, all kinds of sin. Because God died for the worst of sinners. And like Paul said, the chief of such is that I am. Because he can only relate to his sin. Just like you can only relate to your sin. And if you'll allow yourself, you'll be sin conscious instead of God conscious. But we are allowing ourselves to come to church and not get changed. Church is supposed to be a place where we bring something to the altar and it dies at the altar. The altar. This is an altar, not a stage, an altar. God asked for altars, not stages. He asked for a place that people could bring their stuff and set it down. You're not supposed to come down here with your stuff and bring it with you on the way out. Don't leave half of it. Bring all of it. Set it on the altar. Crucify that thing. Let yourself die to that stuff and walk away from it never to return. Everybody shout the anointing. The anointing is what breaks yokes. We've traded our power in for performance. We have the, the feeling of being good instead of feeling God. Do you know you can go to church and feel good but never know that God was in the room or not? The devil has convinced the church that it's better for us to parade ourselves than to pray. If you want to know how popular the preacher is, the pastor, show up on Sunday morning. If you want to know how powerful and, and, and popular the evangelist is, show up on Sunday night. But if you want to know how popular Jesus is, show up to a prayer meeting. The prayer, he said, my house shall be called a house, not of preaching, not of singing, not of shouting. I praise God for all of that. But if we don't have the prayer as the first agenda on the, God is raising up. Let me tell you, in September, this altar is going to be full of people, whoever they want, pacing back and forth, crying out to God, believing God for his anointing to flow like never before. There is an anointing coming on this generation. But it's a generation that says, I'm going to set myself apart. I want your oil to flow. I'll pray it through. I'll pray it till I pray enough. God wants you to pray. Shout, I'm going to be a prayer warrior. There's a remnant. And you can't have the power without the price. Oh, but I want the anointing. But do you now? How many want the anointing? Give me the anointing. If you want an anointing, you got to know how anointing is made. If you could get that to me real quick. Just walk up here. Come up here with me. Dr. Dre Shum. This is a press. Now, I'm going to take this olive. It's pretty, tasteful, but I ain't got no oil. The only way to get the oil out of an olive is you've got to press the olive. Are you willing to let God do this? Because if you're willing to let God use you to get others healed and others delivered, then that means you're willing to go after this first. We don't want this, but we want to be used in deliverance. We don't want this, but we want to be used in miracles. We don't want this, but some of you... The reason why you have felt the stuff that you've been feeling for the last year, even this, this, this month and last month, the last six months, you have been feeling something press you that you have got to change your way. There's something on you. How many can relate to what I'm saying? There's something on you that is pressing you. Pressure reveals what's on the inside of you. It takes pressure. You've got to have pressure. Without pressure, nobody's going to know what's on the inside of you. The Bible says Christ in 
me the hope of glory. If I'm going to release glory, if I'm going to show the world Christ, something's going to have to press on me. I press. I need something to press me. I don't need anybody to press me. I need God to press me. And I've been through some pressings lately. Has anybody been through some pressings lately? God said this, Paul said this to Timothy. He said, I have been apprehended because I've been apprehended. I'm telling you to apprehend. I'm after something. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. At one thing I'm doing, I'm letting stuff go that's behind me and I'm pressing toward the mark that's before me. It's two things that are happening at one time. I refuse to let my past hold me, so I'm letting it go because I'm apprehended in the press and I'm moving towards the greatness that God has for me. Nothing's going to happen until you get pressed. The oil comes from pressing. The oil comes from trial. The oil comes from persecution. The oil comes when something on the outside sees greatness on the inside and starts pressing you. That's why you gotta count it all joy when trials come because God sees something on you that is so great that he's willing to press you. Can you shout for the press? We want the oil, but can we have the press? The press is what determines. And the more oil, the more press. Are you willing to let God press you? Sit down. We've got 20 more minutes. There's no time here anyways. God is saying I'm pressing both generations at the same time. And the reason I'm pressing both generations at the same time is because the younger generation has the strength and the older generation has the wisdom. You don't go to the older generation and say, we got it. The older generation has the wisdom to take you. The older generation has a tenure of time. They've been through some things that you haven't been through yet that I haven't been through yet and I've got to listen to them hear their wisdom because I may have the strength they might not have the strength that I have but I have my strength still and so I listen to the generation before me to help me strategize because they have been through some moves of God they know what to watch out for they know how to keep us safe some, don't listen to all of them but some of them some of them know and we've got to have the press on both generations all generations have got to experience the press Everybody say, God press me. It was just a coat. But they would take oil. And the oil that they would pour was a hint of oil. A gallon. This oil had to be poured from a deliverer or a prophet. All through the Bible, a prophet or a deliverer had to pour the oil. You might want to take that hat off, put that hat hood on. You get a new hat. You don't want to take that hat off. May I ask why you want to not take that hat off? Flip it around the other side. And whatever that A is, is about to win the World Series. Put the hat on. Put the cap on. <clears throat> Pastor Delana, come here. I want to take your shoes off because where we're standing is holy ground. I want you to see what God is doing in your generation. When we go to church and we ask for healing, the Bible says they take oil, they lay it on, and they dab. That's not what God does when he pours. When God goes to an anointing, goes to an, when God goes to anoint a generation, he does not dab you. What you're going to do as a church over the next few years is going to need an anointing. God says, Jesus says this. He says, if I don't go, I can't give to you what I have. It is to your advantage that I go away. He's talking about the anointing, talking about the Holy Spirit. I can't give it to you. 
He says, but wait and ask for the power for you're going to be endued. Everybody say endued. Endued with power. Wait for me. The word endued means clothed. I'm going to put a robe on you. I'm going to saturate you. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Without the anointing, it's just a status. Without the anointing, it's just a church. Without the anointing, it's just a song. But with the anointing, everything changes. All through the generations, God says, strip it off of Aaron. Put it on Eleazar. You didn't get to get a new coat. You don't get a new coat for your generation. You get the other generation's coat. And that coat isn't tailored to fit you. It's God's coat. So no matter what size you are, you got to wear the coat that's already been made. There's no new coat. There's just new anointing. It's a fresh anointing. Aaron died. But the Bible says he was stripped of his coat. And it went on to his son. Spiritual sons are about to wear the coat. Spiritual daughters are about to wear the coat. The anointing of what Aaron carried never left just Aaron. The anointing stayed on the earth. And it increased. And he said, I want you to put spices on it. I want you to smell it with cinnamon and cassia and all these other things. Because when you pour the oil, you're not just getting oil. You're getting a fragrance about you. When you pour the oil, everybody in the room smells you before they see you. This is what God is doing. Put your hands on that. When God goes to an anointing, when God goes to anoint people, Psalms 133 says it pours. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looks like to be anointed by God. Everywhere you walk, you now leave a footprint. Before you walk in a room, they would smell him. Aaron, before he walked to their tent, they knew he was coming. Because he wore this fragrant coat. This thing. Kindle is a representation of everybody this generation God is pouring an oil out to those that will separate themselves he's taking the coat and he's saying I'm putting it on another generation Aaron brought it to Eleazar Eleazar to Zadok all the way down the lineage to a man named Zacharias and Zacharias had the coat this is no joke this is the truth Zacharias carried the coat Zacharias was of the lineage and it had to go through the lineage. In other words, you had to be in the bloodline to get the anointing. You've got to be in the bloodline to get this anointing. You've got to be saved to get this anointing. You've got to have the blood of Jesus to get this anointing. Everybody say the anointing follows the bloodline. The anointing follows the bloodline. And it went all the way from Eleazar to, uh, to Aaron to Eleazar to the Zadok. All the way down the pre... It jumped over on, if you, remember, if you recall, Eli and Hophni and Phinehas couldn't handle the anointing. They wanted to do strange and stupid stuff. Lay with women. Be sexually immoral. And God says, I'm dealing with Eli and his household. And it jumped back upon Samuel. And Samuel kept going all the way down the bloodline till it got to... 
Zacharias. Most people don't know who Zacharias is, but the Bible says that God spoke to Elizabeth and said, you're going to be pregnant with child. His name, he, he didn't tell his name, says, you're going to be pregnant with a child. And, 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 and when, when she got pregnant with a child, God spoke to Zacharias and said, your, your wife is going to have a baby and you're going to name him John. And he would not believe what was said. And so the angel said, because you did not believe what I said, I'm going to shut your mouth. I feel the anointing of God on my life. Let me tell you something. Rosh Hashanah is a new year. For, for this last 577, seven, seven, whatever it is, it was a year to open wide your mouth. The next year in the Hebrew calendar is to shut your mouth. Just like when God led, he was led, did not say a word. It's the anointing that's coming on the people of God. There's great persecution coming to the church. I wish I could tell you different, but there's great persecution coming to the church. But you're going to have to learn how to not open your mouth and still cast the devil out. You're going to have to learn how to not open your mouth, but they still smell you coming. You're going to have to learn, to, I don't, that, that, just something broke off of me. You walking in the room, you didn't have to say a word, but you carried something so deep. God is looking for people that will be carriers of an anointing. God's not looking for a badge. He's looking for an anointing. He's look, not looking for your name to be on a plaque somewhere. He's looking for an anointing. He's not looking for your PhD, your DR, whatever you got. He's looking, are you going to be anointed? Zacharias he said because you didn't listen to me you'll be mute they shut him up until John was born they didn't know what to name him because he was mute they went into Zacharias and he said give me a pen and a paper he said his name shall be called John when he agreed with what God did <sighs> hallelujah I can talk again I can speak again. If you're not in the will of God this next year, don't plan on being a spokesman for God. But if you're willing to speak for God, God will raise your voice. He's about to amplify your voice stronger. If you will blow the trumpet, he'll use your voice. His name shall be called John. And John now is clothed. The Bible says John never touched a drink, never shaved, wore a coat of camel's hair. He ate wild honey and locust, and he was preaching in the wilderness because ain't nobody in the sanctuary wants to hear what John the Baptist has to say. Because John the Baptist's message is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What do you mean repent? Get away from your wicked ways. Turn from yourself. Cleanse your body. Cleanse your mind. Because what God's about to do, you're going to want to be in a cleansing mode. Walk with me. John carried that anointing. Why did John the Baptist, why was he the Levite that was in the wilderness? Why was it God, that, that God went all the way down to Zach, Zacharias into John the Baptist and John the Baptist preaching like a wild man and people came out to hear him? Why? Why did Jesus go to John the Baptist and say these words? Permit it to be so as right now. We have to do this. Because in order for me to fulfill my ministry, I have to have a prophetic voice just touch me and baptize me. Jesus said, we're going to do this the right way. We're going to allow the anointing that's on you to baptize me. You're going to baptize me in water. You're going to take your coat of anointing and put me down and bring me back up. But when I put my coat on the church, I'm not baptizing them only in water. I'm going to baptize them in fire and in the spirit. And Acts 2 and 1 says they were hanging out. They were praying in one mind and one accord. That's why we don't shout alone. That's why we don't praise alone. That's why we don't dance alone and jump alone. Because we're all in one mind and one accord looking after one thing. We were gathered in one room looking for one thing and the Spirit came. The same thing that happened at Azusa in 1906 can be the same thing that happens in this house in 2020. But God is looking for people that will... Will you wait... Until everybody else has cleared the room or will you stay in the room for the anointing to fall on you the anointing come on John the Baptist 
because Jesus was about to be presented to the world. Watch me. The reason why God spoke this for me to tell you this is because the anointing that you're going to get is an anointing that John the Baptist carried. Why? Many people would disagree. Up until the days of John the Baptist till now, kingdom of heaven, stuff like that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the only way Jesus could be ushered in is that somebody raised up with an anointing. The only way Jesus is going to come back is because a generation is going to rise up like a John the Baptist. And they're going to cry aloud. They're going to spare not. They're going to lift up their voice. And John the Baptist was alive for about nine and a half months and they took his head from his body because they preached on sin. It was the last time in the last 15 years, how many sermons have you heard on your sin? You could probably count them on one hand from all the popular people that's been preaching. We can get you a yacht, a new car. We can tell you to send money to get you something, house on the hill. All that stuff belongs to you already. You're in the kingdom. You don't have to pray for it. Just say, thank you, God, for my blessings. But what about keeping you from sin? What about fear and trembling, working your salvation out? What about falling before the Lord and saying, I need to cleanse my heart. I need to get rid of my double-mindedness. I need to stop. I need to throw some stomach. What about holiness? What about godliness? What about sanctification? What about separation? We're not hearing that. But if you'll listen in September, the Holy Spirit is saying, I need a church to come apart. God has given me four powerful messages for September about how to get out of, get out of Egypt. I'm asking that the anointing that is on this coat, if you look at it, everywhere he walks, he leaves a mark. Everywhere you walk after tonight, you're going to leave a mark. Everywhere you go, your feet are anointed to heal the sick. Your hands are going to heal the sick. And they will be made well. His word says it. I believe his word. How many believe his word? Don't you pray and hope. You pray and declare. God's raising up a church that knows how to pray. Are you listening to me? Get your mind off of popularity. And put it on power. God, I want more power. Power and purity are very synonymous. If you want power, get pure. Well, it's not, I'm not saved by works. I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm talking about your power with God. How many want to see God move? Yeah. Lift your hands, stand to your feet. you to pray in the Holy Spirit for about just a few moments. If you know how to pray in your holy language, pray. If you want an anointing that's going to shift your whole life, cause you to be separated in September, I want you to pray right now. Lift your hands and pray. The oil is coming. The oil is coming on a church that will not back down. The oil is coming on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's. The oil is coming on Daniel's. The oil is coming on John the Baptist's. The oil is coming on Jehu's. The oil is coming. The oil is not about chills up your spine. The oil is about breaking bondages, shackles being loosed. And tonight, 
I believe this generation is about to receive an anointing that will shift them forever. Come on, lift your hands. Just trying to be obedient to the Holy Spirit here. Lift your hands. If you know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, I ask that you would lift it up as loud as you can in this place. Hunger has a sound. Oh, I know what the Holy Ghost told me to do tonight. I'm just waiting for the moment. Tonight's not a night to just wear a coat. Tonight's the night that the oil gets on your coat. God's raising up all the generations to cry aloud and to spare not. You're in this room because you know you feel it and you know God is pressing you to go higher with Him. Lift your hands and cry out unto the Lord for these next few moments. What God is doing, He's going to need a hunger from you. That says, God, I refuse to let go until you bless me with that oil. Some of you are going to have the anointing that you're going to lay hands on the sick and you're going to see them recover. Right? Some people are going to see tumors drop right before your very eyes. This isn't going to be something you have to go watch. This is something you carry. It's in your DNA. Oh, I wish somebody was hungry for the oil. Oh, I wish somebody was hungry for the oil. When he comes back, he's looking for people who have their oil. He's pouring his oil on a generation. He's pouring his oil on his people. He's pouring his oil on those who want to see revival and an awakening. If that is you, pray right now in the Holy Ghost. Oh, If you got to close your eyes, whatever you got to do, but don't let anything distract you right now. Lift your hands and pray aloud. Pray aloud. Cry out. God will only give to those who really want it. He said, I'll pour out my spirit. Hunger has a voice. Now is the time to receive an anointing that breaks the yokes, shackles are loosed. You will never be the same after tonight. Woo.
for the anointing? Are you hungry for the miraculous moving of the Holy Ghost? If that's you, praise the Lord. Come on. Prepare the way with your praise. Some things are breaking off of you right now. Shackles are being loosed off of you right now. Some of you dealing with addictions you've never dealt with. It's been so strong. God's breaking it off of you right now. Sexual addiction broken off of you right now. Identity confusion broken off of you right now. God loves you. God wants the anointing of God on your life. He's opening up prison doors to those that have been bound. Shout it out, prepare the way. 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 If you're hungry for it, you already know what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do. I don't have to tell you what the Holy Spirit, some of you are fighting the Holy Spirit right now and the Holy Spirit's saying, I need you to do this and this. I need you just to do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do right now. Take your shoes off as you come to the front. Take your shoes off. Yes, this is a holy moment. If God is calling you to do whatever you're supposed to do, do it. Do it quickly. Every generation, God's not just moving in the millennials or the baby boomers. He's moving on every generation in this building. The Holy Spirit should be speaking to you right now. You need no man at this point to tell you what to do. You're doing exactly what the Holy Spirit told me you would do. Mm. If you're not down here, at least pray for those right now. Lift those hands and receive. Speak over those. It's gonna be like fire shut up in your bones. September will be like fire. Purify me, Jesus. Make room. Ushers help. If they want to get down here, don't let them in the aisles. Get them down here. There's plenty of room right here. Bring them. Bring them. If you're in the aisle, come. If you're over here, come. Justin, all of y'all, help them get through here. Everybody, if you're a son in this house, help. There's too many people that want to be down here. Bring them. Baba Sobroto Cositie. We got cigarettes up here. If you got if if you got condoms in your pocket and you're sick and tired of that, throw them up on this stage. Immoral living, bound living, sinful living, crack living. I don't know what that is. Step away from hookah. Step away from club living. God is calling you higher. Take yourself serious. What God wants to do, he needs you to separate. Some of you, you can't stop cussing. I break the spirit that tries to make you cuss. You're constantly F this, GD that. 
And I hear the Lord say, if you'll allow God, he'll wipe that from you. Filthy language. The Bible says filthy language. It's in the Bible. I would be serious. I would be serious. You should be at the place where God, don't leave me out. Whatever you do it in September, don't leave me out. This is not condemnation. It's the Holy Spirit speaking conviction in your heart. But I'm a no You're never gonna be the same. There's such a hunger in this house. Oh, there's such a hunger in this house. I am not going to stop your hunger. Cry out, call out until you've called it out. Oh, God, I give it to you, I give it to you, I give it to you right now. I refuse to be bound. I refuse to be bound. I walk with holiness. Separate me, Lord. Consecrate me, Lord. Sanctify me, Lord. Set me apart for your work, Lord. I refuse to be. I refuse to be normal. I want to be supernatural. In September, pour your oil out on me. Everybody that wants it. Everybody that wants it, get in this room. Everybody that wants it, lift your hands. Everybody that wants it, call out to God. Hey, I won't do church like I always done it. I will pray. I will press. I will fast. I will seek. I will move. God, I want you to challenge me, change me. Oh. Rest toward the mark. Holy Spirit. 
There's deliverance in this place. There's healing in this place. There's miracles in this place. And I don't know you. Have I met you? Have I met you once? She said you're a youth pastor or something. It was. Come up here. Are those good clothes? Stand right there. God showed me you. There's a few others. But I'm going to pour this oil on you. You're going to feel something change. But we're doing it because this represents the, the body. But God said, choose this young man because the stuff that you've dealt with, you'll never deal with again. There's a high anointing on your life that after tonight, you will never be the same. Preacher. You're not a connector. You're a preacher. Be careful who tries to connect to you in this new season because your voice will go out and certain people will want to connect but with, with wrong intention. But I'm going to pray that when this oil hits you, are you okay with this hitting you? Head? I'll do it on your hands if you want. All over. <laughs> Lift your hands. For everybody that's in this room, I'm doing this through him to you. Lift your hands and say, God, I receive this, a fresh new anointing. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Somebody lift your hands and say, that's me, Lord. You just shifted to another level. Somebody praise God. If you want this oil, get your hands. is going to shift you. It's going to shift you. If you want it, get close to this altar. Come on. If you want it, you're going to be hungry for it. If you want it, you're going to be hungry for it. Let me also I declare the anointing and the favor, the power of God to come upon you. The power of the Holy Spirit. You want it? You want it? Soul winner, soul winner for the kingdom. Anointing, break yokes. Break yokes off of them and let them break yokes off of others. Oh, anointing, this generation, full of the anointing, full of the power of God. Right now, you're anointed. The anointing, the anointing on every generation, every tongue, everybody. Everybody gets the Holy Ghost. Everybody gets an anointing. In September, everybody gets the anointing. What's your name? What? Do I know you? Deandra? Sierra. Sierra, like the drink. 
Sierra Mist. Ooh, that's the Holy Ghost. You know, a mist is what they followed, a cloud. Sierra, I see stuff in your past God's annihilating right now. And Sierra, God says, I'm going to anoint you to heal. But it won't be physical. It'll be mental. For the Lord says, I've brought you through some mind valleys. And God says, I'm going to cause others to be healed by your knowledge that I've given you. And you're going to have an anointing that literally is going to break chains off of people that are full of depression and fear. God says, after this moment, fear will leave you. After this moment, intimidation will leave you. After this moment, pleasing people will also leave you. The same thing that broke off of my wife is going to break off of you. She's laying hands, but eventually she's going to get down to you. You better get close to let her lay hands on you because there's an anointing that's going to break things off of you and everybody else around you. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Do it for Sierra. Now give God some praise in this room. Right now, I rebuke. I speak. speak an anointing that will break things off of her and everything around her in the name of Jesus she's all right brother she's just got the Holy Ghost set a generation free set them free by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I declare let the power of the Holy Ghost. I re release the power of the Holy Ghost. I release the power of the Holy Ghost upon my brother. I thank you, God. World changer, world changer, shaker and mover by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. I'm going to put a kingly anointing on you and I speak it right now you're going to have the favor
If you want it, if, if you want it and you have not had anybody lay hands on you, you need to, everybody down there that you've already had lay hands laid on you, move up, move, give them some room. Make some room. Ushers, if you've helped me with them, some of them are still feeling the Holy Ghost. They don't understand what I'm saying. And that's fine. I get that. If I've already laid hands on you, don't come up here. Make room for those who need it. If I have not laid hands or my wife has not laid hands on you, lift your hands so I can identify you. Jesus. In 31 days, you will see a miracle. 31 days. By the end of September, you will see God's hand move on your life. In the name of Jesus. Touch. Touch. God's got the right one for you, baby. Wait on him. Boy, you're anointed. You're anointed to do battle. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now the power of the Holy Spirit to touch, anoint this generation. God's, everybody shout, God anoint me. Put your hands. Put your hands. Something happened. Something happened that made you feel like your destiny was headed in one direction, but then it was like the plan got canceled. Like God said, this is the direction now. And it's been a hard trying time because your eyes were set on one way. But God says, I've anointed you for another direction. God says, I'm going to reveal in September what I want to use you to do. If you'll flow with me, if you, if you'll, God, this is God, not me. But if you'll go after me with all your heart, I'm going to show you the ministry that I've put on the inside of you that you don't think it's a ministry, but it is. God says, my hand is on it and I put it on you. I put an anointing that breaks yokes. Whatever you're going to do, God says, I'm anointing it. I break off years. Anointing breaks yokes. I break it off. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Anointing for separation. Anointing for consecration. If I haven't laid hands on you, my wife hasn't laid hands on you, you want that, get, get, get on this, put your feet or something, get close to this thing. I don't want this anointing to lift and I'm starting to feel it lift. It lifts because the hunger starts lifting. The anointing responds to people that are expecting. If you're not expecting, the anointing lifts. them make God famous wherever they are if you'll chase after God he'll give you the desires of your heart come on get your hands up if you're hungry for it get your hands up Lord touch them touch them God touch them they're hungry for you they're hungry for you God show them what they need Show them their hunger. I pray over my brother right now. I declare his ministry soars in September. I open the door. I open every door that's been shut. I open it up right now. I ask for the favor of God to come upon him from his head to toe. I declare a new season, a new season of favor and blessing because God, he refused to give up when he should have given up. I rebuke every devil in hell trying to come against his ministry and I receive an open door. Stephen King, I anoint you. 
under the power of the Holy Ghost. New doors, fresh vision. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wild, wild, wild anointing. Wild anointing on Cross Factor. Wild anointing. Wild, wild, wild Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you that they will be marked by a peculiar praise. Peculiar people, full of the anointing of God. The power and the favor of God, Lord. A fresh anointing. Have I prayed for you? Have I already prayed for you? Jesus, touch them. Touch them, Lord. Touch them. Come on, everybody in the place, lift your hands and thank God for the anointing pouring out in your generation. There is a coat of anointing on you right now. If you believe it, shout yeah! Sing Brooklyn. Sing Brooklyn. Yeah. God is doing something in this room. He's doing it on stream. Something's happening with this movement. How many feel that? If you're a leader and you've been serving, come quickly. Come quickly. If you're a leader in this house,
Don't let anything distract you. We're, we're going to be done when the Holy Spirit says to be done. Jesus. Would you all stretch your hands towards these people that make it happen? I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. If you're a leader in this house, I'm encouraging you to step up on this plastic. Make a single line so we can identify. Holy, holy. Jesus. I pray over this family that they will skyrocket in September. Put an anointing on them. Y'all stretch your hands towards these powerful people right now. I speak over Keith right now. I declare the anointing in favor of God upon his life. I spoke over Deidre right now in the name of Jesus. I speak over Candace. Lord, anoint her. Anoint the season she's in. There's an anointing coming upon this house, coming upon your house, coming upon this thing. God's going to do something great in September. Lift your hands if you believe it, and you're a recipient that September will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every ungodly thing that would try to attach to the anointing God has placed on your life. And I right now declare a double of portion of his favor and anointing. one more time and roar with a shout of praise come on Zion lift up your voice Zion lift up your voice Zion hey Judah Judah you're anointed for battle in September
is doing cannot be reversed. I work. I work, says the Lord. And who will reverse it? I work. And who will reverse it? My arm will be revealed to you in September. I will strengthen what needs to be strengthened. I will bring back restoration what needs to be restored. And God says you'll never look back from this moment forward. You'll never look back with what nips at your heels, says the Lord. Something nips at your heels. I see it almost like it's discouragement, discouragement, discouragement. You go take three steps and the enemy just discouraged, discouraged, discouraged. And it like it stops you dead in its tracks. And it makes you look and ponder. God says you'll feel it again, but it won't, make, it, won't, it won't stop you. You'll keep walking through it. It'll try, but you'll have so much victory from this moment forward. Because God says, I work, and who will reverse it? I have put favor in your household. I anoint you from this moment forward. And God says, you have not seen the second half yet. For the Lord says, my ladder will be greater. For you said, God, is it my time to stop doing this? And my time to stop doing that? Is it my time to sit down and watch somebody else? And the Lord says, no, it's not your time to sit down. It's your time to stand up. God says, I've anointed you for a second round. God says, you have tenacity. You're tenacious. You hold on to things. You stop and hold on to the presence of God. God says, you discern me. You know where I move. You know what to do. And God says, even when you're silent, God says, I'll be loud. Even when you're silent, I will be loud, says the Lord. Because what you've said has fallen on deaf ears in the last season. But God says, none of your words will fall to the ground in this season. I will anoint what you say. Because you are a woman of submission. You're a woman of submission. Because you're a woman of submission, God says, I see. I see your submission. And your submission has authority and power wrapped all over it. And the Lord says, in this new season, I'm going to raise you up. And I'm going to speak through you, says the Lord. And some will say, why is she doing this? Why is she doing that? But the Lord says, I've anointed her for battle. I've anointed her words to break things off of people. I've anointed her words to literally cause a light to flip open on people. You're going to feel, you're going to feel like I'm not saying like I used to say. Because here's what I see. I see you doing it differently than you've always done it. But the words are weightier than they've ever been. The Lord says it'll be two or three words, not two or three paragraphs. You'll just say a couple of three things and it'll shift people's perspective and what they think and what they say and what they do. Stay under submission. Stay under submission. Just like all of us stay under submission. Whatever covering, whatever household we're in, we stay under submission. The Lord says, I'm going to use you. I'm opening your mouth right now. Receive. Receive it. Receive it. Baba solora be aso broto kosia. Karamandoro di aso braba baba soro. Anoint and a sign them in this season for war God says I've made your hands ready for war you're a silent witness to what I'm doing you're a silent storm but God is backing every word you say you've been through some things but God says I'm removing every trace of insecurity and intimidation and I'm replacing it with authority and kingdom power saith the Lord I feel God's gonna shift your household first then your ministry second I declare it in Jesus name do it pour anointing out in Jesus name somebody shout amen where's the media team in the name of Jesus I declare no weapon formed against him can prosper. I declare break yokes off of her that have always been on her. She'll never deal with them again. Because she opens the door for others to see, let her see first. Father, I just declare right now, anoint him, effectively anoint him. 
Stay with me. I got something to say. Come on, stay with me. Father, I just pray over him. I pray over his household. I pray over the Graham family. I pray over an anointing that breaks the yoke. Lord, use his hands to heal. Let him go home and heal. In the name of Jesus, I declare power to break off of him. I power to break things off of him. I declare an anointing right now upon this man of God, this champion. Those that have given up themselves to do work so others can see. God, open their eyes to see. I speak a new anointing and a fresh anointing upon him. I declare the favor of God that surpasses all understanding to be upon him right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice and shout for these people that work behind the scene. Hallelujah. One more shout of praise. If you're still in the house, make some noise. Thirty more seconds. Come on, praise him. Twenty-nine. Twenty-eight. This thing's about to wrap up. Twenty-seven. Twenty-six. Any hungry folk in the house? Twenty-five. Any people that don't care, all you want is God. Twenty-four. Twenty-three. Come on, you want to see revival? Twenty-two. Make some noise. Twenty-one. Eighteen. Seventeen. 16. You're about to walk in a new season. 15. This is going to be the greatest September in your life. 14. 13. 12. 11. 10. You're at the 10 count. 9. Come on. Ain't nothing keeping you down. 8. Come on. Get up off that canvas with your shout. 7. Get out of the corner. 6. 5. 4. Three, two, champion, shout! Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Aramonias. I'm addicted to God. Ain't no, uh, no high like the most high. The anointing is still moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. What you gonna do, Lord, with these crazy folk? The month of September, every person in this house, I really believe this. God spoke to me and said, to fix your heart to be used by God miraculously at least one time in September. One of those bold, I'm going to go pray for this person, they will be healed. I'm going to go pray for this person, they're going to get saved. Tenacious. We should be rowdier than a football team. Crazier than a basketball game. If the heathens can praise their God like they do, we should be able to praise our God like we should with voices loud and high. There's deliverance going on right now. Everybody shout two words extremely loud. Come out. Did you say it because I said it, or did you say it because you're mad at the devil? Like it's your own brother that's getting delivered. One, two, three, come out! Now shout at the devil. Let him know you got authority in this house. Something's moving, something's breaking, something's changing, something's shifting. Feels like heaven on earth. Give me that oil. God showed me before the service that I was going to pour oil on a few people, and Jeremiah, he showed me you. 
Wow. God spoke to her. That there would be certain people that we would touch with oil, certain people that we would pour with oil. And I've seen, I seen Sam Sunderland. Yeah. Sam, you're clutching that Bible like you're going somewhere, Sam. Come up here, Sam. And I've seen this generational thing going from Sam to our kids to the next generation. And it represented all these generations. And I'm going to pour an anointing on you. I just want him up here because I want him to see. Lincoln, come up here real quick. Brooklyn, where are you? Whatever you're playing is full of the Holy Ghost. It's overflow. He said this place is overflowing. They had services in 1906 that went from morning, afternoon, and evening, and nobody cared because the glory was so thick. Arms would grow in front of them. Stubs would turn into full arms. Not because of people, but because of God. William Seymour would hide behind shoeboxes saying, please don't look at me. People would do certain things that he knew was flesh that he would call them out in a service and they loved him. Not because he corrected them, but because they knew he was right. Because he had a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Just like you do right now. Jeremiah. It's like fire. Shut up. What birthday is this? Twelve? Is it twelve? If I'm not mistaken, that's the year that a boy becomes a man in the Jew, Jewish customs. Am I right by that? Is it 12? They have bar mitzvahs? 13? For you, it's 12. boy steps into manhood it ain't about physical things happening it's about a mind that changes lift your hands Jeremiah you're super sensitive in the natural because God made you super sensitive in the spiritual don't ever stop crying for If you knew what he'd been through, you would cry with him. Uramanda siki elia sobroma saya teriarabo shalarabo dikie. What I have for you, what I'll do for you, says the Lord, will far surpass what you've gone through. For I have anointed you, and I've appointed you, and I've put an assignment on you. Other people's shoulders could not handle what I've put on you. 
But I already know your end from your beginning. And I know that I formed you just like you are. To hold weight. What would break others only bends you. God says, I've called you to be a weeping prophet. I've put a sensitivity in your gut that if you'll tap into it, your generation will be changed by your sensitivity to the Spirit. From this moment on, do not be one of those that looks for acceptance for you'll never be accepted from those around you. God says, I've made you unique and fit and fashioned you formed you, put you through tests and trials at a young age. I have stamped my approval on you. People don't know it. But when they're hurting, they're going to come to you. Because the anointing is on you. Break the chains. Break the chains. Break the chains in your generation. Don't be conformed. You conform it. The Lord says, I've put an anointing on you that not many people your age could go through. But I have pressed you because I wanted the oil out of you. I've pressed you. I don't know if it's even possible, but I feel Chris. You got that anointing that was on your daddy. It's on you, but it's this time it's just the good stuff. Somebody in this room clap unto God with a powerful clap. You'll never be the same. Azusa's coming for you. The Holy Ghost is coming for you. Lincoln, lay your hands on him. That's why I needed you here. Lay your hands on him. The sensitivity that my son has is about to go through him to you. My son carries the current of the Holy Ghost. He hears it. God make Jeremiah hear it. The same spirit that's on Pastor Delano, musically, I declare there's a transfer and impartation that's happening right now. Stretch your hands towards this moment right now. It's a holy moment right here. Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, my soul cries out to you. God in three persons, you're the blessed trinity. We won't stop until we see your glory. We won't stop until we see your glory. We don't want the status quo. We don't want the stuff. 
We're fed up with simple Christianity. We want more of you and less of me. We want more of you and less of me. If that's your prayer, lift your hands in the building. We want more of you and less of me. Magnify yourself and me, pour anointing over me. Yeah. I won't stop. I won't stop in the month of September when it feels like it's going to be too hard. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to be committed and consistent to see your anointing come through me like it's never come through me before. And if I'm praying your prayer, lift those hands higher and say, that's me, Lord. Something's going to shift and change upon your life. September, you'll never be the same. If you believe that, would you give God one more hand clap of praise? Somebody say, praise the Lord. How many would like to know what we're going to do next September? In next, I'm sorry. How many would like to know what we're going to do on the next Taken Back Sunday night? You all would come no matter what, right? Like I said, somebody reached out. And said, I love what God is doing in your ministry, and I'm supposed to come. Asked us, and I was blessed that they asked Delana and I, because their ministry is a ministry that normally wouldn't do something like that. We, we flow in the same anointing. But I just want, I just want you to know, I don't think this room is going to fit what's about to happen in September. How many would like to know what's going to happen on the next Taking Back Sunday night? Nah, y'all don't want to know. Expectancy is what gets it. If you're expecting God to do something, no matter who's showing up in the room, get up on your feet, get ready. Just look at the screen for about 30 seconds. That should tell you. And let me know how you think about it because I believe God's going to move. Pastor Delano and I both. Is anybody excited about next Taking Back Sunday night up in the Holy Ghost house? Would you make some noise so the neighbors can know? We've been going back and forth and just talking. Amazing what God is speaking. Don't you get your eyes on anything else but what God is about to do. I wrote him today, and I said, the Lord just spoke to me today. I don't know if I can. I think I didn't. I don't know if I saved it. But I said, God persecuted the church in Acts 2 and 1, or Acts in, in Acts, to scatter them. In the last days, God is persecuting the church to gather them. I said, God just spoke that to me today. He did a voicemail back, and he said, my God. He said, I just got done with my people, my team, and we're about to go live in London tonight. It's 8 o'clock that time. It was 2 o'clock our time. And he said, I just said the same thing to my team. You just spoke out of your mouth. And he read it to somebody beside him, and they went, my God, you just said that. There is such a this with his ministry and what God is doing through Pastor Delana and I, and I'm just believing that, look, September 1, you better sign up for 27 days. We're going to be fasting, praying, sacrificially giving on, uh, on Rosh Hashanah. We're going to be blowing trumpets, new season. We're going into the new year, happy new year. And then we're going to have a Yom Kippur day and night. When that, when that September 27 hits, you're going to be in a place where people have been fasting, praying, giving, sacrificing, calling out to God for 27 days. 
with a ministry that said, we want to do whatever you're doing. Their whole band, their whole team, everything, Todd Delaney and all of them, are doing exactly what we're doing in September for 31 days. Going to separate, going to push back the plate, going to let things go. I'm not saying give up everything. you got to sign up to see the details. You can eat. It's just not what you want to eat, probably. Amen. You like oats? Good. But it's going to be an incredible, amazing service. I don't even know if we're going to fit them in the building. Matter of fact, we're probably going to have to stop the registration at 700. So when the registration opens and you want to be in the room, you better sign up because I'm not playing favorites. Don't sign up and not show up. If you sign up, we will, we will release your seat a week before if you don't reply to the email that comes back because this is too important. Too many people are hungry. He said, I'm not coming for a concert. I want to be in a move of God. So he's not here, and we're not here to come to get entertained. He wants to be in a place full of hungry and expecting people. So do we. And we just believe that there's ministries that are combining, collabing together to see God move in a powerful way. Everybody shout, God, I'm ready. Use me. If you're watching online, I'm not even sure if they're able to still watch. Did it come on? Did it kick off? If you're watching online, am I, am I, am I doing this in vain? Am I good? <laughs> Sometimes it kicks off. If you're watching online, separate in September with us. What's 31 days to literally call out for the great awakening? Every day, we're going to send you devotion. Every week, we're going to have live prayer calls, and we're going to talk about what God is saying. This whole month is a month to fall flat on your face. God wants us to fall forward before we fall backward. We're going to lay prostrate before the Lord. We're going to see what God's going to do. And at the end of the month, when the time comes for registration to open, we want you to be in here the next Taking Back Sunday night. Are you all ready and expecting? Hey, this is Pastor Miles, and I just want to say thank you for watching. Pastor Delana and I are so excited and thankful to be a voice of revival in this generation. I want to ask you to do something. I want you to like this. I want you to make a comment. I want you to share it with somebody that needs revival in their life as well. You know, Worship with Wonders Church is a place where revival happens. Second of all, if you're able to, I'd love for you to partner with this ministry by giving to the website that's on the screen there. And I just want to say thank you in advance for doing that. And just remember, Worship with Wonders Church is not just a place of revival. It's a place where revival happens continuously. And you are a voice of revival too.